Welcome to your very first slide guitar lesson. My name is Jules Leahy, and I'm going to get you playing some slide guitar today. The very first thing is to choose which finger to put your slide on. I'd really recommend if it's all new to you, which it probably is, get started with it on your pinky. Later on, this is going to be advantageous for a bunch of things that we'll do. But for right now, let's just get it started with our pinky, okay? And another thing is that our guitar is gonna be tuned to an open E chord. So basically, if we were playing normal guitar, right, like standard tuning, we would fret the E chord like this, okay? And basically, we're just making it so that instead of E, A, D, G, B, E, our strings are tuned to E, B, E, G sharp, B, E, G sharp, B, E. Okay, so that makes a nice E major chord for us by just strumming the strings. So be sure your guitar's in tune and then let's get to it. So the first thing I wanna show you is a little blues riff that's probably very familiar we're just going to use the open strings, the fifth and the third fret. And I just want you to repeat after me. We're gonna do a little bluesy rhythm that goes like this. This is a great place to start. We can be just kind of open to hearing all the strings. I was kind of focusing on the lower strings, but if you play the full chord, that sounds great too. That sounds like this. And just getting comfortable with wearing the slide takes a little while. So this sort of like aiming at a big thing to begin helps. Okay, so again, we're just focusing A, G, E are the notes or the chords in this case. One thing that we get into right away is, you know, since we're mostly gonna be using fingers and not a pick, is that I like to kind of pretend like I'm holding a pick with my index finger and use my index nail as a pick. So sometimes I can go, And then if I want a softer sound, I'll just use the flesh of my thumb, right? So that's a dynamic and tone thing that just comes right from our right hand. No pedals or anything, just how we attack the strings, okay? Now, something that's really cool about this very simple little blues riff is that it's begging for sort of a call and response sort of thing, right? And this is where we can get into a little bit more of single note lines. And there's this very cool thing that this tuning does for us. We have some similar tuned strings. What I mean is that we have this B, E. And then that's the fifth and fourth strings. And the second and first strings are also B, E. Why is that advantageous? because now anytime we learn something that might go like this, we can just do that up an octave if we want right here. So as far as vocabulary is concerned, we can just learn one thing and have more than one place to play it. So here's sort of how I might use that with this blues riff as an example. Pretty cool. This is total classic blues vernacular call and response. A very simple, you know, but neither part is very complicated. Let me run through what's happening specifically on this little lick that I played in between. A big part of what's going on, and this is one of the great challenges of slide guitar, anytime you're playing one note at a time, 
our slide doesn't just only touch that one string. We're laying the slide across all six strings. So our right hand is going to take care of muting what we're not playing. This is challenging at first, but the more you just think about highlighting the one note that you really want, okay, just make that one note come out, the sooner you'll get to hearing the clarity in your lines that you're looking for. Let me demonstrate with that little lick that I just played. So it's fifth string open, fifth string at the third fret, and then fourth string. And that's the kind of trick where your muting gets put to test, okay? You need to move your hand over in order to mute that fifth string. And let me just go really slowly and show you what I'm talking about. One more time. So there are some ways that we can do this. One thing that I would recommend you just think of is as much as you can, this muting thing doesn't need to take up too much of our brain space. We just need to sort of slop our thumb over most of the time to mute what's happening below the higher strings. In this case, we're playing on the fifth and fourth strings, so our other fingers are just going to kind of rest on the higher strings, okay? That takes care of the muting. So now if I just hold my middle ring and pinky finger on the third, second, and first string, that allows my thumb to block the sixth string down here, and it also allows my thumb to pluck the fifth string open. That's the sort of like ready position that we need to be in right now to play this sort of thing, right? This is actually a really good picking practice, just going between the fifth and fourth string. You just wanna make sure that you're picking each string, and then once you're done with that note, you both simultaneously mute that string and strike the next string. So you don't want it to sound like this, for example. That might be useful for something, but we're trying to specifically only have one note at a time. So you should try to have that sound like this instead. Then when we try to play our lick, if we have that sort of muting down, it can sound like this. Now I'm gonna play just using that same technique, but I'm gonna play a little more freely just so that you can see if we get this lick down, that sort of muting is gonna just help all of this vocabulary pop out. So check this out for a sec. I'm just gonna play using that muting technique. So there's just some pentatonic sort of vocabulary. We'll get into that later. But mostly, it's just about hearing that one note all the time popping out. No matter what string we're on, okay, we, if we get that muting with our right hand really solid, that's going to help these ideas really come out clearly. Okay, so now back to our blues riff. I'm going to play a little bit more. Um, out of both the fourth and fifth string, the B and E string there, and then I'm gonna move up and I wanna kind of take it to another level. So I'm gonna just do the same exact thing, um, the same sort of idea, but on the second and first string later, okay? That sort of develops an idea and literally takes it to a higher pitch, but we don't have to really think about anything differently because all of the same licks just fall under the same notes because of the strings being tuned the same way, okay? So let me just play it for a sec, and this is where we're trying to go with this blues rhythm.
Okay, so that's developing an idea in our open E, just sort of open position, um, really just trying to get comfortable with how it works, how it feels with the slide. We're not worrying about too much moving around the strings yet. We just need to make sure that we're dampening the parts that we need to, um, muting with the right hand. It doesn't really happen with the left hand. Your left hand's busy playing and articulating the notes. I think simplicity is the key to this sort of getting started playing slide. None of my ideas were super complex. I'm really staying pretty close to, you know, open position. I might have moved around a teeny bit, but um, it's mostly pretty just open strings, a little riff to separate my other single note ideas. I would love to see your own video of you playing a blues like this. So if you can, shoot me your own video, send it to my Instagram, um, whatever you can do, I would love to see your progress on this sort of blues playing. Please feel free to share it with me. I'd love to hear from you. In this open E tuning, one of the most convenient and just cool parts of it is that we have this chord that we can slide around all over the place without working very hard. The most common chords that we're gonna have in this E tuning and in the context of a blues is we're gonna have the A chord at the fifth fret and the B chord at the seventh fret. And then the E chord is either open or at the 12th fret. So this is just a really nice thing that we can always fall back on if we don't have a bunch of vocabulary or you know, say the A chord is coming up and we don't have a bunch of licks we can play, we can always do something like this. That's not necessarily super exciting, but just getting started with this, that's A. A major is at the fifth fret. All of these notes work. So what we might want to do is there's this pattern that I really like and I'd like for you to try along with me now. I'm going to take us through a 12 bar blues and I want to just use a pattern. I'm going to slide on the third string up to the 12th fret and then I'm going to play the first string with my index finger. Okay. This is a sound of the sixth. That's the interval that we're talking about. It's the major third on the third string and then it's the root. In this case, a G sharp on the third string and an E on top. And this sixth interval is really useful. Now I'm gonna play that at the fifth fret. Okay, so we're outlining a 12 bar blues here, okay? And it's funny, we're not entirely into a ton of vocabulary. We're just getting acquainted with how this works. It's different with these strings tuned to an open chord. There's a lot of work kind of done for us and we need to just let that happen. That's why I'm showing you some of these licks. This is very simple to slide from 10 to 12 or from three to five or from five to seven. Now we're focusing on different things, like we want our intonation to be good. We want to make sure that we have nice vibrato. You don't want this kind of vibrato. We need to make sure that it's really smooth, that we're in control, and that it sounds good. It sounds like, you know, a singer singing. That's what slide guitar players were emulating anyway when they started, is a singer's vibrato. So for all of these little seemingly simple and easy licks, let's make sure that they sound good by paying attention to our dynamics, our vibrato, our pitch. So once more, doing that same sixth idea with the third and first string, I'm gonna play through. And if you have your guitar there, try playing along with me. This is the first bar of a 12 bar blues. 
So there you go. That's a nice little, not just dragging your whole slide. You know, that gets a little tiresome. We don't really hear anybody playing full chords, just dragging the slide around. That was really like a, just getting started with things. We hear more parts that are sort of like that, where, you know, two notes at a time, two or three notes, especially up on the higher strings. It's not like this full, you know, we're not playing six strings at the same time very often. So that's a nice little exercise, a cool way to get through the changes. You can also use that same exact thing that we just did. One way I like to play through those changes as well, super duper similar thing. Instead of the first and third strings, try just hitting the second and third. You can do a couple of different things. I would try that same approach from a whole step down to the chord that we're going to. But you can either just slide in like we just did. Or you could do it chromatically, which would be frets 10, 11, 12, like this. So that's definitely got a little bit more of the like kind of country pedal steel sort of um, sound to it. You know, it's kind of luau-ish and that's great. You know, we, we can say that with the slide. So this is just expanding what we're able to say with the slide, whether you want to make it sound like you're at a luau or not. So now that we have some of those ideas, I want to stay a little bit more in just the 12th fret zone, okay? And again, this is our E chord. And there's a very cool thing that we get with this tuning. And up at the 12th fret, there's this magic little zone I really love to work out of just two frets at a time. And this sort of magic zone is specifically starting at 12. But instead of thinking past the fret, I think when we think of like an E minor pentatonic scale on guitar normally, we sort of think with like our index finger at the 12th fret and everything's past the 12th fret, right? Like 12, 15 and further down. But in this case, it's a little different in slide guitar land, at least for starting out sake. We really want to think of this as 12 and the, the best next fret is 10. Let me demonstrate what just going from 10 to 12 on each string does for your slide guitar playing. There's tons of vocabulary in here. But for right now, I'm just going 10, 12, 10, 12. Then I'm gonna play some licks and show you how many licks sit right in this zone. Okay, so I was strictly staying between 10 and 12. But obviously there's not only the 11th fret in there as well, there's kind of the 10 and a half fret, 11 and a half, there are all these quarter tones and, you know, slide, we're talking about a fret, but it's kind of this spectrum. So our 10th fret note might be like 10.1 or something. And the more you get it, the more in tune you'll naturally play, especially if you just slow down and really focus on attention to details, okay? But here's what that sort of 10 to 12 exercise will get you as far as vocabulary is concerned, if you're really slow and steady with it, then you can play things like this. <laughs> That 
that sounds like some of our heroes, Dwayne Allman, Derek Trucks, those sorts of guys. They're playing that sort of vocabulary, okay? It starts with 10 to 12. You can do this in any other key if you want. Let's say you're in the key of C, which would be at the eighth fret. Now we want to think of eight and six and hear all those same ideas, but in the key of C. There's the pattern, here are some licks. Really cool. I'm not working very hard. I'm just kind of hanging out in one zone. A lot of the attention to detail of like which note I'm really sliding to is what makes it sound, you know, either bluesy, major, minor, however you really want. But you get where this is so much vocabulary right here. We can move across the strings eventually, do crazy shredding long vocal run type of playing. That's really hard and takes a long time. I'm working on that stuff right now and it is really challenging. To just play these licks makes it sound like, you know, we know what we're doing on slide guitar. You don't need to know much more than those two frets for right now, okay? Also, this sort of two fret idea is something that I talk about in more depth in my masterclass video. So be sure to check that out if you haven't yet already. All right, so that does it for your first slide lesson. Hope you made it through all right. And please let me know what you thought in the comments below. We have tons of other slide tutorials and guitar tutorials on our channel. So be sure to subscribe and I will catch you next time.